Right, morning everyone. I'm here with Zales and Kev for the Money Man Rugby World Cup. Uh, say preview show, but we're actually a weekend. So for the Rugby World Cup show, um, there'll be no betting advice on any games happening this weekend because of how World Rugby picked all the fixtures. We have some pretty lopsided, some pretty lopsided fixtures this week. What we will be chatting about is the Springboks moving in as outright favourites. Um, and then, of course, the injury that has shaken the Springbok camp too. So, Kev, welcome from Ireland. Thanks. Thanks, Ollie. Great to be here. In Ireland, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> to be sure, to be sure, as they say. Um, look, I... When the when the rugby world a week before the rugby two weeks before the rugby world cup started, you had uh, New Zealand as clear favourites. I think they were thirteen to eight. Um, South Africa, you could still get about seven to two. Um, uh, but now after after the the box demolishing New Zealand, and um, and strangling, I saw your boa constrictor type uh, video yeah. on on. Uh, <laughs> on uh, what um, South Africa did to Scotland. And, and, and you can get an analogy. But does it warrant the Springboks being outright favourites for the World Cup now? No, considering, you know, that they've still got to play Ireland and they've still got to play the winner or the loser of of New Zealand, um, New Zealand, France in that group, which looks like, well, we don't know. We don't know the results of the Ireland game and, you know, uh, are are they justified favourites, see, and all? Uh, Kev, if you had asked me this 24 hours ago, I would have said, you betcha, baby. <laughs> but uh, they just lost Malcolm Marks for the, for the, uh, for the tournament. And um, they are not flying in a hooker, it seems. They're going to go with two flankers as backup hookers, number two and number three. Yeah. And they're already in a position, as I've spoken about ad nauseum in all the other shows, where they've got a goal kicker that will either kick five out of five or two out of six on any given day. So in terms of their point scoring, the goal kicking is a bit of a is a bit of a is a bit of a gamble. And mm. so the other way you score is, is you score tries, and you score tries for South Africa generally from the line out. You drive the line out, they drive the line out over the line, you score off the mall. Now when you've got a, a hooker potentially that isn't great at feeding that line out, the efficiency goes down, so your conversion rate in the twenty two goes down. Mm. Those are all things that you have to factor in. Um, also, we beat Scotland, who, as I know they were ranked fifth in the world, but not exactly a team that gives us a run for our money often. And it was a great performance, and it was physically imposing, and all of those things. But France beat New Zealand, mm. and they are the hosts. So, I mean, I've got to say no. I don't think South Africa... I, I wouldn't bet uh, on short odds for South Africa yeah. to win the World Cup. I don't think it's a good deal. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. I think... Uh, just, just for the record, I think they're, they're 28 to 10. So almost 3 to 1. But uh, I get your point. Yeah. Well, well received. <laughs> Look, it's a massive, massive loss for South Africa. And yeah. he is really one of those key players um, that you kind of build your team and your dynamic around, especially in the South African context. With that being said, there is not one team that is without an injury like Malcolm Marks to the Springboks, True. you know? Uh, France included. I think Paul Willems is out for the, the tie campaign, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Intermac also, also did his ACL. Seems to be the, the injury of the World Cup. Um, it's trending. Yeah, it's trending. And, and France, I think, if anything, are you know, South Africa's strongest opponents for yeah. um, you know, World Cup winner titles. I think, rightfully, people's perceptions of New Zealand should have shifted because I don't think it's an anomaly for them to get whacked by the Springboks and then pretty comprehensively beaten by not a great French performance. You know, I think the uh, the weaknesses there are very evident and it's nothing that they can really repair over the six weeks. It's the fact that they just don't have a pack, mm. you know. So like you, um, you've you spoken about it nauseam, it doesn't matter who's from 9 to 15. Mm. So I think when it comes to now betting on the World Cup winners, you're dealing in hypotheticals. So the hypothetical in South Africa's case is uh, you know, what happens if Bongi Bonambi goes down? Because if he doesn't, then it's a very different story, yeah. you know? Um, I think if you're looking from a betting perspective, for me, if you believe that the Springboks are going to get to the final, I think you have 
greater chance of making money looking at the two teams that are then playing in the final and betting on the day mm. because I think the odds will be evenly split and you'll be getting good return on your money. I mm. think to put an outright bet on the Springboks now, mm. even at close to three to one, is risky given the number of things that could go wrong. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas later on in the tournament, there's less likelihood of things that could go wrong. There's a lot more sort of idea of, you know, so say France and South Africa get to the final, the odds will be evenly split. Mm. And then you have a chance to make a very informed call prior to match day. Yeah, yeah. I would personally, I mean, I uh, sort of lumped money on the Springboks in the last World Cup. I think rightfully so at five to one or something like that. And, you know, it all came through. I'm not as confident that it's the right bet to make. Not that I'm not confident that they, mm, that they can win that it. They can win it. Yeah. Excuse the long. Yeah, look, I, I share that. I share that. that that's, a, that's a great point. Oh, when you look at um, trying to lay off a bet, which, 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 which professional bettors do, later in the tournament, you, you want those five to six to one odds to have made it worthwhile. You know, there's still so many things, like you said, that can go wrong at 28 to 10 to try and lay it off at even money for a final when they've got such a difficult quarterfinal opponent. It's a, it's a sucker bet. So yeah. I wouldn't be taking it. Um, but I also equally wouldn't take France at three to one because even though I think that they should be the rightful favorites right now after their uh, beating of, 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 Fran of uh, New Zealand and the fact that their home team... Um, their three to one odds don't offer the same sort of dilemma for a better. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, I would, I think Ireland are the team that offer decent value when you look at where, if you look at them going out to, let me just check their odds. Um, I think they're out four, four to one, five to one. Yeah. So they're, they're in that range where they might, they, they may offer. Value, and especially when you look at them, you know, if they beat South Africa, they'd be playing New Zealand. They just won a Test series in New Zealand. Um, I don't know. It's, it's to me, South Africa shouldn't be favourites. I don't believe, um, like you say, especially with Malcolm uh, being down. What what a loss for the box, eh? Yeah, yeah. Look, I think who is the team? It shows who's the, the team that disappoints. Sorry, guys, go ahead. No, well, if anything, it just shows the development of rugby, even in the last four years, you know, to have this sort of uh, equal staggered betting odds. Um, because, and I think, I think it's disappointing for anyone that likes that long bet, you know, and, and picking an outright winner, because I think there's definitely an element attached to betting of just wanting to pick an outright winner, even if, you know, the, the more niche betting markets are better options. Mm. Because as much as you're saying, don't pick France, don't pick South Africa, then... Don't actually pick anyone else. You know, there's there's no one that's got the odds that warrant at in round two going, you're going to be outright winner. I think a lot of us felt, you know, 2019, it was like this Bach team just got something about them and they're hugely undervalued. Mm. Take the long term mm. outright, you know. Look, for, I, I think for me, the team, the team that does offer a little value is Ireland. They've beaten France. They've beaten New Zealand. Uh, they've just beaten Romania, which is not a great team albeit, but by putting 80 points on them. Yeah. You know, the, the the spread in that game, I believe, was 50. Okay. You know, so they, they cleared that bar with ease. And uh, they look good doing it. Um, I guarantee you, I think the box play on Sunday, they won't beat Romania by by close to 80 points. No way. Yeah. You know, I'll, t I'll take plus 80 on, on Romania all day long on, on that. But um, at South five to one, on yeah. South Africa, yeah. I mean, uh, well, no, I take plus eighty points on yeah. uh, on, on Romania not as a handicap. I'm sure. agreeing with you. <laughs> I'm saying it's not the South African way to put any team away by eighty points. <laughs> Kev, what do you think of um, just the the sort of anomaly of rugby today, where a referee can change a game in the first five minutes with a call? Uh, you've got all the safety stuff going on that can radically alter a game. As much as England and Australia are obviously long shots to win the World Cup, they are on the side of the draw where they basically need one of those games to put them into a final. And we all know that on a, in a final, anything can happen. Mm. I mean, are they not worth a little tickle? Yeah, look, at 12 to 1, England, you know, the, 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 the team that disappointed me the most was, was, uh, was Argentina in the first round. Yeah, jeez. Um, they looked turgid. Um, they were clueless. 
it wasn't particularly a great performance from England. Uh, I think it was a magical performance from um, the the North. Yeah, yeah, George Ford. It's George George Ford. Sorry, man. Sorry, to go. Um, they England looked terrible, but yeah. Argentina looked hopeless, beyond hopeless. Yeah. So I mean, uh, um, is it? But the twelve to one, you're right. England's probably going, probably has a good shot at getting into the final. And then you, how much do you put into, you know, what odds are you going to get on them in a final against France? Exactly. You, they're probably going to be, they're probably going to be two to one. So yeah, you know, that's a good point. It's a, it's a, it's a, you make a good point. They're not a bad bet because you know that after beating Argentina, they're going to, they're going to be have a reasonable route to the, uh, to the, to the, to the semifinals. And yeah. It's yeah. just not a bet I could ever bring myself to make. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not the kind of stuff you're going to put your money on, though, eh, Kev? Uh, no, well, I'm Welsh, so I don't bet on England. <laughs> I don't want them to lose. <laughs> yeah. How happy were you when Rodrada dropped that ball? <laughs> What's that, man? How happy were you when Rodrada dropped that ball? Well, um, I never, you know, it's, it's, I never celebrate our success through other people's celebration. But my God, I let out a, uh, I let out a gasp of, oh my God, because, you know, if he took the ball, he was in and, and who knows where he would have finished. Cause I think they would have had to convert that to win. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was, I was relieved. No, no, I didn't celebrate it. It's like, we, we deserve to lose that because we almost snatched, defeat from the jaws of, of victory on that game. You know? The highlight of that game was Dan Bigger bollocking, uh, giving, giving old George, George Rolfe. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. It was, look, it was probably, to me, the most entertaining game in the opening round. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, a, it's again, I don't know whether it's parody in the World Cup a bit, a bit, the World Cup's getting a little bit more competitive, probably. But for us to be worrying about losing to a Fiji, jeez, man. It's... Uh, some of our forefathers are spinning in their grave. <laughs> so we're saying box at this stage. Well, I'm saying still to win the World Cup, but it's not a bet that I'm going to be making. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. No, I, look, I... I... To Wales. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? You know, we get to a final. Or, who knows? But I still think, you know, you to me, France, firm favourites. Ireland, and then the box for my money. And England's worth it, pound to 12 to 1, if you're looking to trade out of that market. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think any of us will be doing that. No. Can't put that into, can't put that into the air. <laughs> no. Well, it's, uh, I think there's a game tonight and uh, round two starts. Pretty mundane, non-excitable game of rugby tonight. And, and I think a lot, I don't think there's any interesting games really other than for... Uh, it's a bit of a better's wasteland, to be honest with you. You know, um, yeah. Yeah, nothing that catches my my interest. I'm flying back on Sunday night, so probably Romania, South Africa is a good game to miss. <laughs> probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. cool. Well, thanks for having me on, guys, and uh, <clears throat> I look forward to being back and uh, and doing a, a live show with you guys. Bye. Safe travels, Kev. I'll have a pint of Guinness for you guys tonight. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.